Seattle Seahawks. Community treasure, winning franchise, excellence. They're the best pro sports organization in this country, bar none. It's not just how the building is built. It's the people that build it. The energy that they bring is just amazing. When we're playing and the 12s are there with us, we got a little something extra going for us. I feel like they love who we are as people, just like we love who they are as people. Seahawks do it a little better than everybody else. They're the trendsetters. The Seahawks became a unifier for this community. Across all demographics, the 12 is contagious. It's for everybody. It's not just in Seattle, though. That's the fascinating part. It's all over the world and seeing so many 12s and blue and green fans out there. It's a special thing, and it really kind of brings chills up your spine. You know, 12s, 20 years ago, Seattle, unfortunately, but fortunately, almost lost the Seattle Seahawks. I got a call from an assistant coach, and he said, I think you better get over here. We're moving. It is with great regret that I am announcing today that the NFL franchise we purchased in 1988 is leaving Seattle. That night in February, I got a call from an assistant coach, and he said, I think you better get over here. We're moving. They're going to pack the trucks tomorrow, and we'll be moving to Southern California. And it was one of the saddest days of my life. Moving bands had packed up the Seahawks from their headquarters in Kirkland, they were actually turning into the Anaheim Seahawks. There was a lot of sadness, anxiety. What's gonna to happen to this team? How can we save it? What can we do? This was a really dire situation involving the Seattle Seahawks. And we had to go to court to keep the team in Seattle. And so the drive was on to find a local owner who would be committed to keeping the Seattle Seahawks in Seattle as a resource and a treasure it's hard in 2017 to understand that in 1997, nobody who had resources wanted to put that money into a franchise. The local political leadership with King County Executive Gary Locke and Council Member Pete Von Reichbauer, they made a couple of overtures to Paul to step forward and consider buying the Seahawks. He was the only one capable of saving the Seahawks. And at the end of the day, there was no plan B. There was only plan A, and plan A was Paul Allen. Paul was the perfect person. I mean, he has a history of growing up here, of being committed to the community. And he said very plainly, he wanted to actually repay the people of Seattle for all of his success by keeping the team here. He's a self-made Seattleite. We were all cheering when Mr. Allen came in the night on the white horse at the last minute to save this thing. And then there was our hero. Paul Allen stepped up. Stepped up in a way that I don't think anybody quite realizes. First of all, let me say that I am thrilled and honored to be part of maintaining the proud tradition of professional football in Seattle. He made a commitment, not based upon a financial reward. He based on the commitment to this community. Sports really brings a community together. And given my long history with the city, I felt like uh, it would be a great thing to keep the team in Seattle. A deal is done, and the Seahawks are staying in Seattle for at least one more season. Our top story this evening, Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen makes a deal with Seahawks owner Ken Baring. Basically, Allen has first shot at buying the Seahawks, but there are lots of things that could stand in the way of a final sale. Paul decided an option structure. He made a deposit and bought time, bought 16 months to help craft a public-private partnership that would put in place a new stadium for the Seahawks. Mr. Allen said, I will put in a lot of money, but I'm going to need the public to come in and help build a stadium. The kingdom was in bad disrepair. The tiles had fallen down from the ceiling and it's turning into an unsafe environment. The only way an NFL team was going to be viable anymore was to have the great facility. We needed a new stadium, and he wanted the populace to support him in that. So the best way to do it was through a state referendum. Mr. Allen said, let's let the people of the state of Washington decide. 
if they want to keep their team here, and I will partner with them, but they're going to have to make that commitment to help build the stadium. He wanted a public vote to make sure that the community and the people of the state supported this effort of this public-private partnership. When I said yes to help save the Seahawks, I meant that I do my part in building something for the future, personally and financially. If you vote yes, I'll do what it takes to make the new stadium and exhibition center a success. I stand by that commitment. But if you say no, that means no for me too, because I'm not going to do this without you. When I said that you'll have the final say, I meant it. Together, we can leave something for future generations. Mr. Allen said, okay, that's great. I will purchase the team, but I'm gonna need the public to come in and help build a stadium. We are all down here today showing support because we want to vote on a new stadium. It was like a lot of third and long and fourth and long situations. The people who want to convince you to approve a tax package to help pay for a new Seahawks stadium say they are not discouraged by our new poll indicating they might be fighting a losing battle. Two months before the election day, the poll showed us down 32 to 57. If the referendum fails, the Seahawks will be gone from Seattle. The time leading up to the vote was very stressful. There was a lot of opposition that we had to get past. So I, as a legislator, was trying very hard to communicate the facts. This is good for the state of Washington. Having a new stadium here and keeping the Seahawks would help fund our schools, would help fund our essential services. It's gonna add to the revenue base of the city and it's gonna help us to pay for police and libraries and all the other things that people want. We worked hard to get the information out there so people could understand that the stadium would be a world-class soccer stadium as well. The only thing we're trying to do is enhance the community. We need you to make sure that your voice is heard. In just under eight hours, voters will begin heading to the polls to decide what could be one of the closest elections in Washington state history. I think everyone remembers the night of the vote. Uh, everybody was in pins on needles. I walked in the door and Paul says, we're down by 30,000 votes. The vote over the Seahawks Stadium remains extremely tight tonight, failing 51 to 49. Referendum 48 was a real nail biter because when the votes first started to come in, mostly they were against uh, keeping the deep. The early results were bad. You know, I was sweating bullets. At that point, I thought we were gonna lose the team. It is winning with 90% of the votes counted 51 to 49%. Yes! By 11 o'clock, it was looking like votes from Western Washington were tipping the scales and moving the needle to the positive. And then Paul stepped up on stage. He strapped on his guitar and started playing along with them, and it was a lot of fun. Everybody remembers him playing uh, with the band and, and performing and just really celebrating. It's a side of, of Paul Allen that people rarely see, rarely see. In the end, the love of the Hawks and the understanding that this was a big deal for our city, our county, our region was able to lead to victory. Fortunately enough, we, we passed, you know, referendum 48 and Paul saved the Seahawks. I think people thought that this was a better community with the Seahawks here than with the Seahawks gone. Here we go, CDI. Clear. I think the winning culture started when we just kept watching this beautiful facility rise out of the ashes of the kingdom. Paul grew up watching Husky football in the Husky Stadium. His dad would take him to games. We grew up loving football, and every Saturday we would make the trek down to Husky football games with my dad. Paul borrowed some of the best design principles from Husky Stadium, including 
what we call vertical intimacy, where people in the upper decks are close to the game. The fan experience was first and foremost. We wanted the stadium to be loud and for every seat to have great sight lines. Having one end of the stadium be open, there's a visual connection to your surroundings and to the community. That first night was amazing. It was just something really special about figuring out how to make that stadium our own. You know, coming up with ideas like raising the 12th man flag, tame of the hawk. All this great stuff made it really the best atmosphere to watch a football game in the entire NFL. Hey, challenge them today now. Okay. Mike Holmgren really put his fingerprints on this organization and started to build a contender every year, building through that 2005 season. Touchdown, Seahawks! The 2005 season was kind of like a magic carpet ride. It was amazing to watch the Seahawks keep winning. When there's goal lines to be found, Sean comes in, what a day he's had. They were starting to fly at an altitude that no Seahawk had ever flown to before. The crowd noise that we had in the 2005 season was so pivotal to our success, especially defensively. Most false starts by an opponent. This is as fine a team as I've ever been associated with. You're gonna play for the NFC Championship next Sunday, right here. Seahawks won the NFC title game. That's when the reality sunk in that we are really going to go to the Super Bowl. I've waited 30 years for this. It's worth the wait. This is why we all together tried to keep the Seahawks in Seattle, and this is what we were trying to achieve. The vision starts at the top. Paul Allen wants to win, and to me that fits exactly with the way I think. Every owner wants to win a championship, and not every owner does. And when he hired Pete Carroll and John Schneider and myself, that's the reason why we came to this community, was to bring a championship to Seattle. Pete built this team in his own image, a fast, aggressive defense, and a running game with a guy named Beast Mode. Turn and handle Lynch, left side. Finds a little bit of a hole, keeps his legs moving. He's across the 40. I remember just trying to keep up with the call because he was bouncing off of so many people. He's on the run, Lynch. 40, pushes him at 35, look at him go. He's down to 20, 15, he could go. Touchdown, Seahawks. Oh, my word. The Seahawks and the 12th man literally shook the ground in Seattle. Fans got so loud that it moved the earth. Not only are there earthquakes in Seattle, but we can cause them ourselves. We are, we are magic. You feel like you're part of this blue and green army. The energy in that stadium, if you could bottle that, you could run a small planet. It was almost a surreal experience. You knew this team was something special. This coach had put together a defense that we had never seen the likes of in the history of the National Football League. And yet a quarterback who could make plays up and down the field. We have the best home field advantage in the National Football League. It's because of our fans, our amazing, amazing, loud, crazy fans. You're super tired and you're like, I can't go anymore. And all of a sudden, you see the fans jumping up and down and all of a sudden your spirits start to rise. It inspires you to keep going and you're like, okay, maybe I could do this one more play. Nobody wanted to come here and play the Seahawks. Certainly not the 49ers. Shotgun for Kaepernick, takes the snap. Looks, fires near side, going for the end zone. Oh, oh! 
It's picked off in the end zone. The Seahawks intercept in the end zone. Holy smoke. It's almost like we willed that thing to happen. That venue can do that. That was a real moment, you know, because you realize right then we're going. Oh, holy catfish. We are going to New Jersey. Listen to the 12th man. You'd think we were in Seattle. And the ball goes into the end zone. The Seahawks are on the board. Right. We'll play the tie now, okay? Yeah, the throw. The ball caught by Palmer. Makes one man miss. Dives underneath me there. Touchdown! <laughs> Seahawks! They are throwing the roof off this place in New Jersey. Where's he at? 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 Your Seahawks Super Bowl 48 champions. The most fun for me was being able to say, you're Seahawks Super Bowl champs. Because that's shared with the entire community. <laughs> oh my God. Unbelievable, man. Looked every phase of the game. The Seahawks delivered on their promise, and it was, <sighs> I'm, I'm going to faint. One of the best things about it was seeing how gratified Paul was, how proud he was holding that Lombardi trophy. He had made it happen. I don't know that there was anything that brought this city closer than that Super Bowl parade. It's kind of like you're having a sunrise in your heart. You just feel a real satisfaction and joy uh, that's, that's hard to describe. That Super Bowl victory started when Paul bought the team and kept it here. You are the best fans in the NFL. Now we are all Super Bowl champions, each and every one of us. Thank you very much. is really bright. Young players, a great core of players, an organization that is built to last. When you have an owner that lets his people do what they do best, you have sustained excellence. Whether it's on the field, off the field, at the end of the day, I feel like they allow us to be ourselves. We love playing for him. He's honestly one of the best owners you could ever have. The way Paul's established a championship culture is just that curiosity and the constant striving of no finish line. He's a fighter. So that's, that's, that's what we're all about. We're all about fighting, competing, and being curious and trying to stay ahead of the curve. If you're part of Seahawks, you're part of the community, and we give back on every single level. There's no team in the league that does as much in the community as the Seahawks do. There's an unusual bond between this team and this community that you rarely see in sports. The players can feel the love from the public, and I think the fans can feel that connection with the players, too. Everybody involved with the Seahawks during the Allen ownership have been encouraged to get involved in the community. That legacy of being involved in your community and giving back comes from the Allen family. I think Paul sets the tone whether it's STEM programs, whether it's the conservation, whether it's Ebola, whether it's arts, whether it's music, you see him making an impact on every single level, locally to globally. Our players are out there in so many active ways, in so many great ways. It's really our duty to kind of live up to the, the kind of examples that he set. It never ends. It's just been fabulous in using the Seahawks as a venue to help those that need help. 
When you come into the NFL as a boy and you come into this organization, you leave a man and get this legacy from this organization about the importance of community and the importance of giving back. I think that Paul likes to inspire people to try to leave the world a better place. Without Paul Allen, the Seahawks probably aren't the Seattle Seahawks. You know, it gives me kind of goosebumps even to say that because of how awesome this team has been in the community. What he saw was a chance to bring the community closer together. And if you go down to CenturyLink Field every Sunday, you'll see that. You'll see that diversity, you'll see that community. That's what he built here. Fans recognize no one like they recognize Paul Allen. There is no louder cheer, no louder applause in Century Lake Field on a Sunday than when Paul Allen raises a 12-man flag. The day he put that flag up was the most incredible sports event I've ever been to because the whole stadium just became unglued. I've never seen a stadium give anybody as much adulation as they did that day when he put the flag up. We have the best fans in the world and we have the best owner in the world. You combine those two and you get nothing but greatness.